Welcome back to the channel and you guys asked for this, so here it is. In this review, we're gonna be looking at the Joying Tempo one head unit and its integration into my 79 series. And yes, I'm gonna be doing my first ever giveaway and thanks to Joying, you guys have the opportunity to win your own 10.1 Joying head unit, the exact same model as what I've got in the 79. So yeah, more details to come in the video. This video will take us through from what you get as standard from Turner, uh, a few different options on the market for head units, why I chose the Joying 10.1, We'll have a look at the installation process and at the end I'll do a live demonstration to show you what I like about it um, and to show you the functions and features. So please use the timestamps, I know it's going to be a long video and yeah, if you have any specific questions, just leave me a comment below. For what it's worth, I wanted to mention that I am not sponsored nor endorsed by Joying, but I 100% back their products which I've been using for years. Um, when I was preparing for this video, I contacted Joying and asked if there was an opportunity that they could give me a head unit for the purposes of a giveaway, um, and they were on board with it. So by making this video, I have nothing to gain. Uh, I simply love the products, and I'm going to give you an honest review. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we have the factory Toyota 79 head unit. I think these came from 2021 onwards, and here we have the huge Joying 10.1 screen. Now. Uh, I know this one comes in a lot of different cars, uh, a lot of different manufacturers use this Fujitsu unit, um, but it's a very standard unit, you know, it has your built-in uh, navigation, it's got your CD player, it's got Bluetooth audio, um, yeah, it's got USB, all the basic stuff. Uh, and now if you recall in my 79 series review video, I did say that there was about a two second delay um, and I wasn't really happy with that. But regardless, I was planning on upgrading anyway for my needs. Um, I was never going to be keeping this unit. So I looked on the market and there really were a few options I liked. Uh, first one being the new PVS Mark III head unit. Um, it's a 9 inch display. The Polaris GPS Universal Max which is a 10 inch display. And the Alpine unit and of course the Joying 10.1. So the new PVS Mark III comes in at $2,000 and that's without any options like your OB2, your reverse camera, uh, your tire management system, which I probably wouldn't use, um, but I really did like the recessed fascia. Um, I like the new design buttons. Um, they look a lot more tactile, which is what I wanted. And they also removed the logo at the front of the head unit. But I, I did have my reasons not to go with PVS. Now next we have the Polaris Universal Max, which is very well priced at just under $900. I really like the swivel mount screen and also like the screen size, which is also a 10 inch screen like the Joying. Unfortunately, the specs are quite a bit updated and when I had the chance to play with one, it was a bit slow. Now, I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, if you dig a little bit deeper, you can actually find the exact same head unit on AliExpress for a fraction of the price. So, just putting it out there. Next, we have the Alpine X902D, which comes in really well priced at $3,600. Now, for $3,600, you get a really, really smooth OEM style fascia with a really nice interface. Um, that's pretty much what you get. You're getting a really big screen and a big fat Alpine logo. That's literally all you're getting. I guess it appears to have a really smooth interface, a nice big screen, that Alpine logo. But for 3600 and looking at the functionality you get out of that unit, it's pretty much highway robbery. Which brings us to the Joying 10.1 head unit. Uh, now I've had this unit for about three months and it came in at $800 fully optioned with the OBD2 reader, uh, the six gigabyte RAM upgrade and the 128 gigabyte storage upgrade, and also a reverse camera, which I didn't use. Essentially, this is a, a universal Android tablet in the shape of a head unit. And this is a classic example of how not all Android head units are the same. So this particular model has their newer 1200p IPS screen. Uh, it's a really bright, really high definition display. Um, and for the nerds out there, uh, this is equipped with a UIS 7862 CPU, which is smoother than the PX6 uh, in the PVS Mark III, and much smoother than the PX5 CPU, which is in the Polaris Universal Max. Trust me when I say I know, because Joying used to release their units with the PX6 and the PX5. Um, this is actually not even top of the line right now. I think Joying have just released their new line of head units with the Qualcomm Snapdragon. Uh, CPUs, you might have seen that logo in the Formula One Ferrari F1 cars. Whether or not it's faster than this, I have no idea, but this is a really fast unit, so I don't think you can get much faster than this. As far as I know, also, all the newer Joying units come with 4G connectivity, meaning that all you need is a data SIM uh, from your provider to plug into the SIM card holder, 
and your unit will have its own independent internet. So if it wasn't clear already, I really like my new head unit, uh, but why did I choose the Joying 10.1? Uh, well, firstly, I really wanted a big screen. So um, the 10 inch display was an idea I got from the Polaris Universal Max, um, but I actually think even the 11 inch and maybe even the 13 inch Joying display might actually fit in the Cruiser. Um, maybe if I'm silly one day, I might try it. Uh, but um, yeah, I just really wanted a big screen. I also wanted um, the, the unit to function independently of my phone, to have its own internet, to be able to synchronize with my computer um, so that you know when I'm on the go, I'll always have access to my work files, uh, that kind of thing. That combined with the price point and my previous experiences with drawing, wasn't really a hard decision for me to make. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at what you need to fit this into your cruiser. All right, so let's have a look at everything you need to install this head unit into the 79. So out of the box, you also get uh, the GPS antenna. You get an OBD2 reader if you option for one. Uh, what is this? this is a microphone, uh, the wiring harness, and also two 4G antennas. So this is if you're running a 4G SIM on this unit. Because this is a universal head unit, you'll also need a few additional harnesses to make it work. So the first harness you're gonna need um, is this primary ISO harness for 70 series. Uh, this plugs into the factory connectors which normally go into the head unit. Uh, and on this side, it adapts to the ISO universal uh, plugs. The second harness you're gonna need is this antenna harness. Um, it's a very basic harness, but what it actually does is provides power to the antenna. Uh, without this, you won't be able to use your antenna. And the last one you might need, this is if you've previously installed a reverse camera to the factory head unit, you'll also need this um, OEM video retention harness. Uh, if you don't have a reverse camera, now's a really good chance to add one. Joy have a 1080p reverse camera, and I think it's about 40 bucks extra. So all three harnesses I got for under $50 at my local Super Cheap Auto. Um, and if you want the part numbers, I've included them in the description. So with the installation, it is pretty straightforward once you have the stock unit out of the car. Um, you'll need to reuse these two metal brackets which come off the stock unit, uh, which will bolt this uh, unit into the same location. So with the screen, I move the tabs so it sits a little bit higher. Uh, this is the highest uh, position it'll go. So when I've got a bit of time, I'm actually gonna make a bracket to make the screen sit two centimeters higher. Um, it'll make more sense once you see it in the car. So with the wiring, um, I've tried to make this as one piece as possible. So I've used a bit of heat shrink and solder. Um, so you may recall, this was the ISO harness uh, from the factory connectors. So the ISO plugs go into this female ISO joint harness and from this end will go into the joint head unit, to the back of the joint head unit. Um, I've also soldered in the antenna trigger wire, which goes to uh, a antenna cont, I don't know what that stands for, uh, but just two blue wires together. And this will go onto the back of my joining unit. With the OEM video retention harness, so you just plug the RCA in uh, to the camera in, um, and you need to get your ground from the joining harness and also your reverse trigger uh, which you'll need to do anyway for your reverse camera installation. So yep, yeah, that's all the wiring you need to do. And I'm just gonna quickly show you guys where I've put uh, my antenna. So with the GPS antenna, I've just got, a I've just got it in the corner there. Yes, that's a big crack on the windshield. Um, and the GPS antenna wiring just runs behind the glove box um, and at the back uh, where all that wiring is, terminates here on this little um, plug. Uh, the microphone, I've just got it blue tacked there on the side. Uh, once I've got this uh, cluster panel out, I'm planning to relocate the microphone uh, directly in front of uh, where I'm speaking. I do think this is a, a directional mic, uh, so which means you need to actually speak into it uh, or directly into that direction. Um, directly into that direction. Um, yeah, and I'm not running the 4G antennas, uh, but if I was, I'd run two antennas here and run it down the A pillar uh, and back through uh, behind that cluster of wiring. Um, so yeah, let's get it back into the car. All right, so we're gonna start by plugging in the main harness. So got my converter. Yep. And then I've got my reverse camera retention. 
uh, the plug is, where's the plug, here we go, and this is my reverse trigger, so the reverse trigger actually comes from the green wire on this plug, all I have to do, just plug that in, that's in place, and the last thing is the antenna. That's it. That's it, all plug and play. So next I'm gonna grab my drawing unit and just plug everything else up. So I've got the main join connector. The antenna. The microphone. and the GPS antenna. So yeah, if I was using the 4G antennas, they'd be going in here. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, I forgot to mention, this is optional. Uh, I got this off eBay, but this is a, a USB flush mount, and I've just got that running to the back of the, the unit here. Allows you to plug in like your SD cards, uh, a keyboard, that kind of thing. I'll plug that in too. Cool, so now the unit's in, we're gonna put the fascia back in. I'm just gonna run the microphone over this. Like that. That's it. Next thing you get the screen. I'm gonna plug the screen in. Line it up with the clips, and done. That's it. Just reattach my microphone, and yeah, voila. All right, so now's the moment that most of you are waiting for, and that is how do you enter this giveaway? So number one, make sure you're subscribed to the channel uh, because that's gonna be how you find out about the giveaway, and there's also a lot of other cool content. Number two, as part of YouTube's policy, Go down to the video description and read the conditions of entry. Number three, I want you to go down to the comment section and I want you to thank Joying because they made this giveaway possible. It wasn't me, it was Joying who made this possible. And I also want you to include in your comment what vehicles you drive and if you want, just let me know what kind of content you'd like to see from this channel. Good luck and I'm gonna keep this competition open for four weeks. The plan is to draw the winner on the 18th of September and I'll release the video hopefully on the same day or maybe the day after. All the best with it. Okay, so now we've got the head unit installed. Um, I think you guys can see what I mean by moving the dash up a little bit higher. Uh, when I get time, I'm gonna make some brackets, but uh, this is in the factory location um, and yeah, it does its job. Just aesthetically, I think it'd look a lot nicer being flush with the top of the dash. So yeah, I'm gonna fire the car up and I wanna show you guys what this unit can do. So yeah, um, pretty quick boot up time. Uh, it boots up back to where you left it. And uh, yeah, before we go in and jump into the screen recording, um, I wanna show you guys the reverse camera. So just put it into reverse, it's pretty quick. Uh, and you have a really big screen, uh, which is very helpful for loading trailer, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, with the lines, that, that actually comes with the Polaris uh, system, uh, but you can actually add your own lines on the Joying uh, head unit. Um, yeah, so let's jump into the head unit and we're going to go to the screen recording. Okay, so just to have a quick play around to show you guys how smooth this unit is, um, bear in mind that this unit is also recording uh, video at the same time and yeah, it's doing really well. Just at the bottom here you can see um, the icons at the bottom. Uh, this is actually in replacement of physical buttons, which you might have. You can put it down if you want, but I actually like to have them up. Um, one day when I get a 200 series wheel, I will wire this up to have the buttons all working, and then I won't need to use this uh, little dock thing again. Um, 
yeah, to show you guys the features of this unit, I think the best way to do this is actually to, to show you guys my top five apps, uh, which is in no particular order. So the first one is this launcher. This is the Nova launcher. Um, and what Nova launcher is, is it replaces the factory interface. So the look and the feel of it, um, you can customize your home screen, you can customize uh, the fonts, you can customize the colors, uh, all that kind of aesthetic thing. Uh, the Nova Launcher does really well. So all this you see is actually uh, the Nova Launcher doing its job. The factory launcher, uh, to be honest, looks a little bit average, um, uh, but you know, I've used it before and the function and functionally there is no difference. So the next app, which I love is of course YouTube. Now I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, I've watched pretty much every YouTube video. Um, but as you can see, there's a mixture of everything I watch, what my son watches, what my wife watches. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's go into Peppa Pig. Actually, no, let's look at, let's go look at Zach Baldy. So I was watching him yesterday. So Zach with his new RX-7. so incredibly old. Um, yeah, congrats to Zach. But yeah, um, you know, this is a very smooth unit. With YouTube Premium, you can actually have uh, your, your videos playing in the background. Um, so I'm just going to keep playing that. I'll have it running in the background, turn the volume down, and yeah, I can just have it running in the background while I'm doing any, anything else. Uh, I can be surfing the net, um, I could be on Spotify, uh, on Maps, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, YouTube is a game changer for me, of course. Yeah, I love YouTube and it's actually replaced uh, me using Spotify. I don't actually use Spotify anymore. So, um, all right. Uh, so my next favorite app is another game changer and that is KO Sports. Now, this, oh, I've been watching something before. So KO Sports, what I use this for is for Formula One. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I watch a lot of Formula One in this. A funny story, we actually watched a full qualifying session on the way to the boat ramp one year. Um, and yeah, it's just so nice to be able to, you know, enjoy the sounds while driving. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, everything boots up really quickly, which is what I love about it. Uh, and with KO Spots, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I watch, YouTube and KO. Um, the next app I like, I actually don't really use on the 79, uh, which is the Talk app, the OBD2 app. Um, I use this in the RX-7 mainly. Uh, let's go into, yep, yeah, let's go into the app. So, so this is kind of like a replacement for uh, like an OBD, a dedicated OBD2 reader, like what I've got, the Ultra Gauge. Um, it shows you your revs, your speed, uh, your coolant, your EGTs, that kind of thing. All that I actually use my OBD2 reader for, um, but I think it's really cool to be able to display everything here. Um, and yeah, just really clean looking. So yeah, um, the next app I really like is Google Maps or Waze. Uh, now, if I wanted to uh, go straight home from where I am, I'll just click that button in the bottom right corner. But otherwise, sometimes I'll use Waze. So yeah, this is Waze. I am not gonna show you guys where I live, um, but it is silky smooth on my screen. Um, and yeah. So yeah, they're pretty much my favorite apps. I do access my patient files on this. Um, I have my calendar here, my wife and my calendar here, so we know exactly what we're doing. Um, weather, I can check the weather uh, before I go to the boat ramp, or I can check the weather for the weekend. Uh, and I also have live weather here at all times. So I kind of know what's gonna be happening in the next couple of days. If you like to tune your sound, uh, this unit has a built-in uh, TDA7851 amplifier. Uh, this is just what I'm reading off the website. Uh, an interesting fact is when my mate put one of these in his N80 Hilux, he immediately noticed that the sound was better. Another feature that you don't get in many Android units is wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Um, so you just go to CarLink. Um, I don't actually use it, so I'm not too sure, but let's go to CarLink. Yeah, there's CarLink. Uh, and that is the way you boot into your phone. It's completely wireless. You don't need to plug anything in. Um, but yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of having such a, a nice and fast unit. Um, but if that's your thing, um, and I know that is uh, the go-to for most people, um, this is really good at it. So yeah, um, that's pretty much what I use the unit for. Um, I'm sure I've missed out on a lot. And you know, it's pretty impressive what you can do with this. 
Uh, for a full list, make sure you go onto the website um, because there's a lot of information there. All right, so now onto what I actually don't love about the unit. Um, there's actually not much, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you and let you know what I think. So the first thing about the unit, which kind of annoys me, uh, is actually what it is good for, and that is the 1200p display. Uh, but unfortunately, it is so high in resolution uh, that some of the apps don't uh, render very well into uh, the, the tablet. What I mean by that is some of the icons can be very small. You can't actually see that on Spotify. So I'll just boot up Spotify and show you guys. Um, yeah, so on Spotify, you can see the slider down in the left-hand corner, uh, but the font can be pretty small. Um, uh, it's not a huge problem, uh, but I think uh, maybe one day when, when phones progress to be a bit uh, higher in resolution, I think this will transfer over into the Android tablets. One of the things which is really good with the high resolution is maps. Let's just boot into Waze, and you can kind of see how much detail you can get uh, from... Um, from yeah from the map uh, it is remarkable especially when you're navigating you can see all the streets around you and I really like that about this unit and I'd say the last thing I don't like about this is actually this chrome finish on the sides um, I guess it is a really minor thing uh, you can't really tell but I don't know the the chrome kind of doesn't suit the dash as well and if I, I if, and if I could redesign this I'd probably just make it black Nice and black, nice and flush. Um, but I really like this unit. As you can tell, uh, there really isn't too much bad to say about it. I, I have used it quite extensively in the past few months. And I thought I'd just mention, I don't think that this type of unit is for everyone. What I mean by that is, if you're an Apple user, generally you just prefer a simple, very clean looking interface that gets the job done nicely. With Android units, with Android phones and tablets, you really need to customize them, you need to modify the interface to suit your needs. And that's the difference between Android and Apple. Um, and this completely meets my needs. By modifying the interface, it's helped me reduce my commuting time. Uh, it's helped me reduce the time I spent on the phone when I'm driving. And to have that level of entertainment on the go, you know, that just really exceeds my needs. So my mates are right. I am the joying ambassador because I 100% stand by their products. Uh, and that's why I really wanted to make this review so that if you guys buy an Android unit or even a joying unit, um, or if you guys win this unit, um, this will hopefully improve your driving experience. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, best of luck with the competition. Make sure you leave your comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.